Hi. <laughs> Good day. Good day, <laughs> old sir. Good lady. How are things? Things have been better. Why? Have you ever had like a really mean period? Yeah, most of my periods are mean. Well, okay, like, but like one where it's like, you have cramps that just don't quit. So yeah, you can go ahead and take the Midol. Go ahead and take it. We're not going anywhere. And they just like stick around. Was it you who was talking to you about Midol? Because I actually stopped. My periods used to be way worse. I stopped trying it because it didn't work for me. Really? So and then I maybe I wasn't talking to you about maybe it was someone else. But they were like, no, it works. Try it. And I, I haven't tried it in like 10 years. So maybe I should. Normally it does. Normally I if I like feel just like it coming on, I'll take it real quick and it'll kick it. But like. You get a mean period and it's like, nah, nah. Like, go ahead. Try it. Fuck around and find out. Yeah. And then it's stubborn. And then you just like, you're just like gushing blood. (laughs) Sorry, this is graphic. It's graphic. It's always, but I mean, then whatever. This is I mean, my mine started four days early. So I was unprepared. I was caught off guard and I was cramping. Mine always, the cramps start the day before and without fail. It's the next day. (laughs) Sir Celsius ASMR, if you heard that. So I woke up in the morning and it had happened. And all of my white sheets, I had just changed the bedding the night before. So that was, you have to get up, strip the bed, change your bed, whatever. A big nightmare. But the amount of times that you have to like strip and wash your bed in the night. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a little too, it's a little too frequent for my liking. (laughs) Between me and Laszlo, it's a fucking horror show in there. I'm like, (laughs) I guess it's good that I'm always alone. Yeah, so that was frustrating and not to be even more graphic, but I had eaten a 7-Eleven meal the night before, basically. <laughs> so I thought that's what the cramping was from. And I, but because my period was not supposed to be there. And, you know, lo and behold, mine's always trying to psych me out. Mine's like, gotcha. That's how mine is, too. It's like, are we going to have really, really bad cramps and like drip nothing? Or are we going to have like tidal waves and barely going to know I'm here? Or like the cramps are going to be barely be there. I just feel like we're losing the two male listeners we have. So we have to move on. I need to tell you something. No, men, listen. Jim. Men. Jim. You, it's like they don't want to believe that. I saw someone talking about it. It's like they had to create a device that can, that can create the sensation of cramps just so they could feel what it was like because they like, wouldn't believe women when they're like, yeah, cramps are terrible. So one of my favorite podcasts besides ours, ours is our first, second, and third, This American Life. I <laughs> just yesterday was listening to their most recent episode and they had a whole segment about that. So what they did is they brought in a, a reporter who like, you know, went through it and basically all these couples came up and would both do it at the same time. And most of the women, a seven to eight on the pain scale was their baseline. And the men were losing their shit after like four and five. And then some of the couples, some of the men were like, had more compassion but also it's like why do you have to why can't you just believe me the first time but then some of them like one of the couples got in a big fight because he was trying to be tough about it so he could say like you complain too much whatever but one was really sweet and was like I cannot believe you go through this and the journalist circled back with her and she was like I told him I'm at an eight today and he was like okay I get it he didn't get me water though he didn't offer me a heating pad he didn't try to intervene in any way so Yeah, I just it's in the same way that like something happens. I obviously saw a guy on TikTok that was like, I have a daughter. So it's really changed my mind about the election and what's going on. And I wish that men could just have compassion and empathy for women. And I'm not saying it's all men, but a big part of the population, when you have to put it in terms of their mother or their sister or their partner, why can't you just see women as people? That'd be great. I would love that. Oh, no, 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 though. No, no. They're not. Oh no, no, no! They're not no. people. They're not humans. They're just subhuman or sex objects. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we're here to break that system down. Yeah, one period at a time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Disrespectfully with Katie Maloney and Dana Kathan. Unapologetically, we're here to do what we want to do. Spilling the tea. Babe, you're gonna see the power of women. Like disrespectfully. My sister was on a walk with Lenny few days ago and Lenny goes look mommy those are Auntie Rara's friends she calls me Auntie Rara (laughs) guess what she was talking about was there gothics in the park crows I knew it (laughs) crows I knew there was a murder (laughs) there was a murder yeah I've started I I, like literally my propaganda about sharks and crows and trying to and I mean she likes all these things and she's weird like me Mm -hmm. and she I started teaching her to like leave them snacks and like click at them and trying to get this going and Brittany does have like a lot of crows and she doesn't she gets like remember when she was like she found me like gave them snacks and I was in her like bay windows on my camp my phone trying to record and she came out and she's like you're weird why do you do this shit I don't want crows here and I'm like why she doesn't yeah, like you, them 
crows will like literally fuck up your enemies. Yeah, you do want crows yeah, you, around. No, you you do want crows. But anywho, me and Katie, if you don't know, love crows and are desperate to have a murder someday at our big gothic mansion. And uh, mm-hmm. I just thought that was funny that through a child's eyes, uh, those are my friends. I was like, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Anyway, what else is going on with you? I don't know what else is going on with me. Should we do the daddy list? Oh, let's do a daddy list. Who's on your daddy list? Ooh, okay. I have a few things. Okay. <clears throat> do you know what's not on the daddy list is whatever is going on with my throat right now. All right, everybody. Mm, mm-hmm. Is it killing you? Go ahead and cough that out. Yeah. Just do whatever <laughs> you need to do. Take a moment. <clears throat> I don't know. It's like a morning thing. Mm. Okay. It's, ah. getting, it's getting a little, a little smoker-ish, which is interesting because you... Ooh. Know, I, uh, okay. Anyways. Um, okay. On my daddy list. Okay. There's a couple of things. I'll start with two things that are the same things, but different. Okay. Okay. When somebody cancels plans that you don't want to do anymore, like you made plans, like maybe like, like a few days ago and you're like, Fuck, I really don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. I like, I really like, you're like still in bed, you know, you got to be getting up and moving in like 15 minutes mm-hmm. and they text you. They're like, Hey, so sorry to do this. Is there any way we can rain check? And you're like, like, you want to leap out of your skin. You would, but you're too tired to. So you just celebrate mentally while you're laying down. You're so, it's like, a, I'm saying you want to leave your skin. I mean, I get like such a, like I'm rock hard when that happens. <laughs> like you, you, six, to, rock hard. six to midnight. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, it's like, a, like a crisp diet Coke, like the crispiest, like when you're hungover, that's the feeling you equate it to. It's, it's like just like, re- oh, well, you wouldn't like this, but really hot French fries. Okay. Anyways, you would love that. Yeah. One. But yes. Most people will get that. And don't you love when they're like, they're, you feel like they're kind of mm. coming up with their narrative and they're like, and you're like, no, 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 don't worry. Like, I'm thrilled about this. But you yeah. can't say that. You're like, oh, darn it. I was really looking forward yeah. to getting out of bed and well, getting ready. Well, haven't people talked about like, like creating like an app where it's like to cancel plans and if other, if someone else like can't, I forget what it was. What, like, I have no it, idea. How it works where it's like if you have plans and one person like, like if you hit a button and the other person hits it, and you both hit the button, that means oh plans are canceled. So that way, like, someone won't know you hit the button unless they also hit the button. Oh, genius. Does someone want to take my idea? Do you both have plans? And if you tap this button on your end of the app and they also tap it, then the plans are canceled. But they won't know that you did it. Right. They also did it. But you have to, you can only tap it if you want to cancel the plan. What if you don't have it and you want the plans to cancel? And you're like, you text your friends, it's like the teeth brushing thing. And you're like, Hey, you should download this app just in case, like an hour before your plans and they read it and they understand the concept. Well, I mean, hopefully this is something that everyone, you know, has some time. Yeah. But um, anyway, so canceling plans or someone else canceling the plans when you don't want to go anymore. (sighs) Daddy. Okay. On the other hand, and this mostly has to do with like, you know, courtship and dating and all those things. When someone like makes plans with you, like well in advance. They're not leaving it up to like the day before Ooh. or day out. They're not like, hey, like, let's get together this weekend. And then it's like Thursday and you're like, well, fuck you. I got plans now. And then they hit you up on Friday. They're like, so what are you up to later? It's like, no, not you. Mm-mm. When somebody, it's like Tuesday and they're like, what are you doing Friday or Saturday? And you're like, you. <laughs> That's you. what I'm doing. I'm going to sit on it and spin. That's what's happening Friday. <laughs> Give you a little preview. <laughs> I mean, and people something th- sometimes think like, well, isn't that like bare minimum? No, it's not. Because you would be surprised how rare that happens well that's like how hard is that i i just don't understand and especially if they're the one who's instigating the hangout in the first place you should do the plans and you should give me notice because guess what i do it like i have a 24 hour in advance cutoff i'm not hearing from you at 3 p.m and i have moved on Mm -hmm. even if i don't have plans i'm like no this is crusty Mm -hmm. rusty dusty musty and i'm over it yeah it's just nice because that means the person like a respects you b respects that you have a life and you know job and friends and things going on and like if they want to see you that they better like lock it in Mm -hmm. and then okay the third one okay the 3m or whatever they are that makes the tape and all the the, you know they have these wall mount things (laughs) that you can hang pictures or heavy things from because you can hang up to 45 pounds on it because i've been trying to hang all kinds of shit from the walls (laughs) You're like um, Bob the Builder these days. I know. But I was I was sort of, I was YouTubing how to use a stud finder. I'm like, I'm in trouble because I have a mirror that like weighs like, I don't know, like at least 15 pounds. It's like a heavy thing, you know? And um, I was like, I just, I know a nail is not going to do the trick. And so 
I came across these things and and they're just like these like flat little like metal things that have these two hooks. And the way that it like you are able to like use this like little marker that sticks to the back of the thing that then sticks on the wall. So you basically just put it right where you want it to. And then you just press this thing into the wall. You don't even need a hammer. You just use your fingers. That's oh, what she said. That's what she anyway, said. Um, um, yeah, it's I, pretty sexy. Oh, listen to our ums. They're even on the same uh, wavelength. I would need to see it to understand, but I trust you that it's an innovation and really yeah, exciting. Yeah, I went crazy with it. Did you hang the mirror? Yeah, I hung two mirrors. Wow. Yeah, and I'm going to hang it. mount my TV, please? Oh, no. Okay. Whoa. Wait, your TV's not mounted. I'm getting, I have another TV on the way. And finally, I, oh my God. Is it, is it more than 12 inches? It's bigger than a chiclet. So my TV that I've had. <laughs> Dave, for, that's a tiny TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly like, looks like our, it's like a little bigger than this. It's 43 inches. I don't be, know. That looks pretty. That is not 43 inches. Your TV's 43 inches? Yes. So here's the thing. I had the, the same, smallest in my Wii Wii apartment, I had the same size TV. <laughs> and so I was like, it looked big. And because my apartment was smaller <laughs> and the wall was much shorter. So then I moved into a much bigger space with much taller walls. And the guy mounted my TV. And it was my first mounted TV of my life. So I was so excited. <laughs> and he mounted it. And I was like, no, what did you do? And he was like, I didn't shrink the TV. What do you think I did? I'm like... <laughs> Mm, this is witchcraft. I, that's not the same TV. So um, three years later, I have finally gotten a 64 inch. So I'm going to and now I'm going to have a TV. Balling. I'm moving the chiclet into my room. There you go. And then I'm moving that. And also maybe honestly, you could help me with this. I would. We'll talk plans. I need help. I my desk, which is light. I want to get rid of it. I have no full length mirror in my apartment. And now that I don't have a nine to five. Do you want a full length mirror? Yes. I have a full length mirror. I need it to go somewhere. Great. Okay. So you will help me do the desk and then we'll figure that out. Have someone, I'll hire someone to move that over. But anywho, the chiclet's gone. So you can come over and watch shows that you can Shark see week. with your eyes that you don't need bon bonicles that you don't need binoculars for. <laughs> you can leave that in. It's all leaving in. It's the way I'm inverting words. Anywho, exciting stuff. Okay. So is your TV on the daddy list? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually have a decent sized daddy list. It was that. Okay. Is that the conclusion for yours? Yeah, that's My it. basement is much larger and I'm so excited per to get Per usual. To it. You're going to need a, a new house mm -hmm. with a new basement. Mm -hmm. I am. I am. We. It's like I'm going to need like a single family right now. I just have a single person dwelling, mm -hmm. but now we need. You Do know. they need a TV too? <laughs> the basement doesn't get a chiclet. <laughs> no chiclet for you. All right, y'all. I've got to tell you about Lumi because mm. I love it. Tell us. If you haven't heard of them yet, you're missing out because Lumi is a whole body deodorant. And when I say whole body, I mean it's safe for anywhere on your body. We're talking armpits, under boobs, thighs, even let's just say all those spots below the belt. It's seriously that versatile. And I've been loving it. This thing can go up and higher. Yep, That's what sure. she's talking about. The undercarriage. Honestly, same here. But what's got me really excited is their new whole body deodorant spray mm. you know i love a spray you, you know i'm so picky about like sunscreen it has to be a spray mm. it's the same 72 hour control that made lumi famous but now it's an easy to apply spray i've been using it in all the tricky areas if you know what i mean up and higher <laughs> and i love that little canister just lets you spray even upside down because that is the one flaw of sprays when you're like when you're trying to spray something and it's just the angle and you just can't do it so mm. they thought of everything yeah you gotta get into the nooks and crannies mm-hmm and let's talk about how good this stuff is. It's not just masking odors like other deodorants. It actually stops odor before it starts. Lumi is pH balanced, baking soda free and paraben free. So you can feel good about what you're putting on your skin. Plus, it doesn't cause any irritation. And I've never had any issue with it. Nope, sure haven't. Oh, and the scents. Clean tangerine is my favorite, but I've got lavender sage, toasted coconut too. And with their new starter pack, you get a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, plus two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash or deodorant ripes and free shipping. You're getting all that for over 40% off when you use our exclusive code. That's 15% off all Lumi products. So head to lumideodorant.com and use code disrespectfully. That's LumiDeodorant.com, code disrespectfully. Make the switch, you won't regret it. Wedding season is here, and we all know the dread of squeezing into those tight dresses. Am I right? You've seen me do that dance before. Ugh. It's not pretty. <laughs> but let me tell you, Honey Love has completely changed the game for me. Their shapewear doesn't just squeeze and compress. It actually works 
with your body, enhancing your curves and instead of flattening them out and making you look like an upside down triangle. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I've been loving their superpower short lately. It's all about that targeted compression, baby. I wore underdress last weekend and I was honestly amazed. Not only did it smooth everything out, but it never rolled down once, which I hate. And no matter how much I was bending and moving and dancing, it just stayed right Twerking, in place. cutting a rug. I mean, that's also unheard of in shapewear. I used to be dealing with the uncomfortable pieces that roll up or down in just like the wrong way. Honey loves flexible boning. And the side seams keeps everything in place without cutting off your circulation. It's like a little, little gentle, little hug, not a squeeze. Does it in all the right places. And can we talk about the built-in booty lifter? I could use that, let me tell you. I love how it gives my bottom just that little extra shape. Hell yeah. And it's not just for weddings either. I've been wearing it just to feel a little bit more, you know, confident, a little tight and toned on regular days. And you don't even need to worry about the dreaded bathroom struggle. The Super Power Short has 100% cotton gusset. So it's super easy to slip in and out of. You can skip extra undies too. I mean, talk about convenience right there. Mm -hmm. Seriously, Honey Love isn't just shapewear. They've got bodysuits, bras, tanks, and leggings that are comfortable enough to wear Every day, if you want to enhance your legging drawer, their stuff is so easy to put on and really easy to take off. It almost feels like cheating. Whether you're gearing up for an event or you just want to feel amazing in your everyday clothes, Honey Love has you covered. Treat yourself to the best shapewear and bras out there. You can save 20% off right now at honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. That's honeylove.com slash disrespectfully. After you order, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Make sure you let them know it was us You're going to love how you feel. Okay, so first on my daddy list is making new friends, specifically internet friends, who you honestly inspired me because you've met a lot of wonderful people (laughs) via the gram and other forms. So I met this girl, Julia, who's lovely, and we met on TikTok because do you know who Ben Shapiro is? Bad lip filler? I no, I do. Like I do. Yeah. like Allegedly but, bad lip filler, yeah. but that shit has migrated. Yeah. Let me tell you. He's like basically Pangea. So he, she <laughs> made a video about being content in your thirties. And she's like, this is what my life looks like. And he picked that up for some reason and slandered her anyway. So that's how I first found her. And then we connected and we, she lives in Austin, but is from here. And she just happened to tell me like, Hey, I have, I have a couple days left here. Do you want to meet up? So we went to Herwan oh. and had lunch and she is just a delight. I'm so happy that I know her. And like we always preach meeting new people. And obviously, like it could be a dateline situation. So make sure you have a good feeling about it before you meet Internet friends. But I felt pretty good about it. <laughs> and she yeah. did not at all try and kill me, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. So is Ben Shapiro basically like a male pearl? Yeah. OK, great. Yeah. He's yeah. He's right up there with Tucker and fucker and schmucker and all the rest of them so after your daddy list just remind me about filler anyways continue oh okay i'll always remind you of filler my my new tattoos are daddy i got a bunch of new i'm going through something i got a slutty grim reaper tattoo on my hip i i love it it's we all love it it's a little different but if you want single needle tattoos you need to go to christian he's that immersive tattoo in weho it's the same plaza as sushi park but do you remember the show sunset tan oh yeah and i've I remember going to Sunset Tan. Okay, so then you've been to his studio. He's now in the space for Sunset Tan. We walked in and I said that. I had like a distinct memory of Britney Spears being on, I think it was the first episode and she had these cool like reflective looking, like very 90s looking glasses with like, I think a heart, you know, rhinestone on them. Mm. So that was a really exciting experience. Diddy being arrested in New York is on my daddy list. Let's go. Known predator there's video evidence of him but also we need to believe women in general and there are too many stories from too many people i am so thrilled i don't care how much money you have how much power we need to be holding these people accountable and it's just a great day i'm i'm thrilled to see that he's arrested oh my god no yeah when i saw that i was like fucking finally finally go to jail it's just like the harvey weinstein's of the world bye That rickety old fuck. Jane Fonda is on my daddy list. How have we never thought of her? I don't, yeah. No, she should be. Should we try and get her on the podcast? That would be That would be so iconic. She, I mean, the likelihood, but (laughs) we need to manifest it. Does she do a podcast? Is she like a Well, okay, so what I love about her beyond the fact that she's so hot and cool. Mm -hmm. Also, Jean Smart. 
daddy list. Anyways, continue. absolutely. She is works in advocacy. She's an, a very successful a- actress. She doesn't necessarily have to, but I just love what she stands for and mm-hmm. that she doesn't sit around. And I just I just adore her. So I'm very just who do we know that knows Jane Fonda? She's been daddy for like years, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, she's fine wine. But I know. We, Monster-in-law. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> Iconic. Iconic. Yeah. We we need it. We're figuring out guests right now. Uh, if, if you guess that we want to have. And also if you guys have any guests. That nominate some guests. Because we're trying to also think like who would y'all really love to like hear on this? Because we, we want to think we're trying to think of like who we think would be great guests. But it's also like y- y'all are, you know, y'all Consum- are part of this. You're consuming. You're, you know. Consuming the coven. Yeah. So. We obviously had always... This is not ever going to be a guest heavy show, but we want to have one like, you know, every maybe like five episodes or so. And then we looked up one day and our last episode, our last guest was in May and we were like, hmm, maybe we should get a guest. Anywho, final daddy for me, reposting TikToks. <laughs> I used to be really active on X, but uh, not anymore because we all know how I feel about Elon, who is a frequent flyer in my uh, basement. He's he's there today. So we're going to circle back on him. But I just love to share joy, mostly of crows mm-hmm. and cats and things that I find funny. But I just repost like a demon at three in the morning. Let me tell you. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm reposting on TikTok or shit posting on my close friend's story on Instagram. <laughs> Wait, a lot of hot dog content. A lot of hot dog. Quick circle back what? because I thought of you immediately. I think I sent it to you what? and I meant to do this at the top of the episode. OK, so, you know, when Katie told you guys to put milk in a spray <laughs> bottle and put it everywhere. This is what we mean by we this is not none of this is actually advice. This person had made a TikTok and someone commented on it and said, I put milk in my ex's diffuser and a something humidifier else and, and humidifier. And they found him dead the next day. Due to an allergic reaction. First of all, how do you not know this person has a fucking dairy or milk allergy? She might have. So well, I so I was reading the comments on it and someone said a year ago they saw that exact story on a Reddit asking if it was illegal. So I'm guessing it was this person. This person has since deleted their account. So the person that they originally commented on may, used the the comment and made a TikTok yeah, and said, guys- why do you think this is a safe? This is an admission of murder. Guys, if someone is allergic to seafood or dairy or something like that, don't be smudging and smearing it around their place. It's like only if it's safe to do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And maybe she didn't know, but God damn, he was, he was. Yeah, no, I would, I would um, assume that she probably didn't know. Yeah. I have to assume that she didn't know. Maybe she, <sighs> he was lactose intolerant, but like not like deathly allergic. Well, I usually just get a little IBS. Yeah, I maybe, she, maybe she wanted to give him some shits, not like... End his life? Yeah. No, I mean, well, also, we all need to collectively take a step back and stop being so comfortable. What we're talking about on the internet, every <laughs> lawyer... <laughs> actually, someone you know who I would love to have on, Reb Maisel. I mean, you've seen her video. She's an attorney and she's mm-hmm. so funny and cool and smart. But she always talks about that. She's like, stop texting it. Stop putting it online. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, pretty stupid. So, anywho, if you're going to do that, just be so careful that this person doesn't have an allergy. You don't. Yeah, you just want to make their place stink. You don't want to kill the poop person. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, is that- so that milk murder made me think of you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's, that's it. That's the only circle back. What I was going to say about filler. Did you see? I don't know. I saw this somewhere probably on Instagram that there's people getting filler injected into their penis to increase size no (laughs) yeah okay so when it's flaccid does it just look like a bag of goo like lumpy you know what i mean like what what are the implications of that because this is a an anatomy that articulates quite a bit yeah but so does your face and your lips i mean my lips don't grow in size when i'm excited about (laughs) i think it's i mean listen i think we're talking about like also ow yeah Ouch. And also when that migrates, like we're going to have well, ball sacks mi- that look like cantaloupes <laughs> over time. Too. Like, like, where like, does what? It, I literally thought I'm like, where does it migrate to? I mean, I don't know. They must be like oh able God. to like, in, like inject in a way that, you know, looks OK both ways. <laughs> I mean, they have to. But oof, that must I mean, it's not fun to put it in your lips. No. Put it in your penis. I'm a, I mean, I don't have a penis, but I can I can I can, I can imagine. Yeah. You need imagination. No, that's insane. Are, are that's a real? We're sure that's a real thing. Um, it looked pretty legitimate. Eesh. Okay, well, 
Good for them listen, for taking their life listen, into control. I think hey, if, listen, we're we, big advocates of cosmetics. We, surgery, yeah, so. like if we can augment our breasts, we can get vaginal labia enhancements and things like that. Like if men want to fill out their the girth of their ween, let them, let them, <laughs> let them. Speaking of um, labia enhancement, should we talk about the Mormon moms of it all? Oh my God! Wait, you you catch up? No, I didn't. But I oh. saw. I mean, they, it's obviously that's what the sheep pulls her pussy out. So I think that's what's happening. Yeah. So give us the, your thoughts. Oh thus my far. God! I like I would. Did was you finish it? I was prepared, but underprepared. Yes. How long did it take you to finish it? Like a weekend. Um, it was wild. Like when they go for this like girls overnight trip in Park City. Shout out. They play like this like truth box game, and it goes terribly they're scary and the thing is is like winnie who you've already been introduced to like she just gets progressively worse she's like this like she wants that's to be the disc- the- i've only seen the first episode but that's the discourse i've seen online people it's- are mad at her because it's like girl you are the problem you are the problem not everybody else but she cannot see it she like r- like <laughs> there's this one part she leaves the group chat and she's like cannot believe that no one has called to check on her she goes i've I just know that if some if it was someone else in the group chat, I'd be calling them. I'd be like, hey, is everything okay? She was not. That's not why I left the group chat. But I'm just saying. And I'm like, girl, you are so in the wrong. Seems a little manipulative. It's manipulative, but she has to be the victim constantly, always, even when it's of her own making. And she like cries and like it's just she's terrible. She's awful. But like, but also like they're all like kind of really like kind of mean and catty. And I mean, I'm coming from like Vanderpump Rules, where like, hi. But to the point where I'm just like, these girls are scary. <laughs> well, first of all, the ending of the first episode is shocking to me. And then I saw the beginning of the second and it jumps so far in time, which mm-hmm. it's also what's going on is shocking to me and a bummer. But I think that this it's hard for me to take it seriously, how seriously they take mom talk. And they're like, we have to get back to the fundamentals of mom talk. I'm I like, don't you think guys, it's mom TikTok. talk it is not that serious. This. It's not that serious. <laughs> did you know that Whitney, because I did not know this until I had seen the first episode, was the one who her baby was in the hospital and she was like, did a dance like this. I It was I, a really viral video. I'm sure you remember. She was wearing a pink sweatshirt and her baby, she like did it captions on the screen as she's like dancing next to her baby in the hospital. Like her baby's like, laying there. Like, <laughs> the baby's having trouble breathing. Like, it, did she use an Octobuddy when she d- took that video? Like, I was... Yeah. The whole um, thing is I cuckoo. I had forgotten about that whole thing, and they showed it. I was like, oh, my God. This whole thing. Um, Yeah. No, it's... Again, the first episode was, like, shocking, but, like, I almost, like, f- forgot about that as it got on because, like, it just got, like, worse. The husbands are, like, ugh, yuck. Oh, the Terrible. husbands give me the ick. And it's I've only done the first episode. I'll watch the second before we come back here. But they give me the ick. And I think there's some really obvious undertones on that show. But also who gives me the ick? Taylor's mom. (laughs) She she gave me the energy of like she wants to compete with her daughter. And is it like the way she was talking to her because Taylor had made some mistakes and was chatting with her about it. It just was super unsupportive and very much gave I'm in competition with my daughter. And I was just like. Yeah, you, it was, I don't like it. Vibes were for sure, for sure weird. It just was hard, hard watching it at times because it's like I support and like we're like, you know, I, I get that they want to be progressive and change, you know, sort of narrative around like their lifestyle and everything like that. But like there's also times where it's like extremely contradictive at the same time. And it's like they just cannot break away from the school of thought that they've like been in and like had been indoctrinated into like into their entire lives really so it's like kind of like sad because it's just like i get what you're trying to do i can see it and i think it's great but like you're not like it, like you're you're two steps forward seven steps back it's like it's constant like push pull kind of thing and it's just like but it, like it's like heartbreaking and the way they kind of like excuse the behavior from their husbands is like he just he, it's just because he loves me so much i'm like no that's abusive as fuck is what it is and you yeah. should you should run as far as you can like, th- like, this is why you will never be as progressive as you want. And you're not going to, like, ever, like, break stereotypes or anything like that because of these relationships, because of the misogyny that is running so rampant throughout that whole world. Well, speaking of stereotypes, who put them in matching Robin's egg blue p- peacoats? <laughs> 
itself. All <laughs> holding. It's I, it just they're all and they're like holding hands at one point. And you, it's just like you can hear like an old creepy children's song playing in the background. I'm like, what is what are we doing here? I think it's you know, supposed so to be like make you feel uncomfortable. Well, it, they've succeeded admirably. So, yeah, I think it's because next to them, like, you know, with their tits hanging out and shaking their asses and being like and then talking about, you know, word of God and all those things. It's like, wow. They also have what's going on. Here. They have a real passion for hair extensions, which. Hello. And I had seen a TikTok also going around about one of them has a brand and it's called Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. She, she's and there's, talking there's about a, the, the brand. There's a line between it. And it literally looks like have jizz hair everywhere. Like there was some <laughs> slogan and they're like, OK, well, if you have dirty minds and I'm like, but that's a that's low hanging fruit. You really that's a slow pitch. Are you jizz hair everywhere? Ma'am, I, that's what I thought when I immediately saw the billboard. So that's, you don't you don't have to dig deep for that one. No, 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 no. They also like they love, you know, getting like uh, Botox and because they can't drink coffee or have caffeine. For some reason, I thought you were about to say backdoor because can, Oh well, yeah, our conversation. They, I was like, love to get it. No, they love like Botox and like that, but and they get laughing gas when they're there. So it's like, do you, and they for, were bo- for Botox. Why? Because they want to get high so bad. I mean, yeah, I've I've never been offered laughing gas when I've gotten Botox. Not but, just to be like I'm tougher than you, but I don't even use a squeezy ball. <laughs> Botox is such a small needle and it's so quick. Yeah, I don't even use numbing cream for my my lips when I've got them done. No, they just put ice on that shit. Yeah, works better. But yeah, no, they're, they're, they're getting yeah, but they, they're like, so do you think the Mormon girls come here a lot for like the gas? And they're like, totally. They they don't deny it. They're like, it's great. The girl, they're like laughing. They're just getting ripped off that shit. Is it true? You can spoil it for me. That one of them is like, we're pretty sober, and then it cuts to another one, and she's like, yeah, we did ketamine. The ketamine? Okay, so yeah. maybe that. Okay, so all alleged, but I saw a TikTok about that. But so maybe it was just that they were, like, it was a a joke on TikTok, basically saying that they. Do you have insight on this, Allison? Did they do ketamine? They did. The ketamine Good for them. Ketamine therapy? No, I think this is more. It, maybe, but I think it, that sounds. Yeah. Therapy. Oh, ketamine. Okay. Yeah. So no, I was like, I think it's to help keep their marriage like. Yeah. No, I think I think it was like they. T- I th- they heard them talking about ketamine therapy. They weren't like talking about doing like. If you K. need a big old bag of horse tranquilizer because your marriage is feeling some kind of way, we maybe need to evaluate. We need to take a step back and evaluate why that is. <laughs> I was. <laughs> this is a total sidebar, but I saw this post about someone that posted like, basically it was called like, horse aid or something. It was basically like, uh, electrolyte <laughs> juice for horses. And someone's like, um, I'm going to drink this and report back. And like, they were like, I feel better than I have before. Um, I feel like energized. I feel hydrated. I feel like all this. And <laughs> the comments are so funny. They're like, horses can't have anything for themselves. You take their shampoo. <laughs> you take their fucking tranquilizers. And now you're taking their horse Powerade. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, it also, it's true. Like all drugs. How does this start? Someone's like, here's my unconscious horse. Let me sniff some. <laughs> How did that start? Let me just do a little though. Because I'm a lot lighter than them. Look at my cat. It's cookie. Look at that horse's hair. <laughs> I want that. Let me try that. You know, it's like all of it. They're like, let, let these horses. It's called, no, horse. Mane and tail. No, no, but I'm trying oh. to think of what the, the horse Powerade was called. It was, it was like horse electrolytes. It yeah. It was like in a bucket. Horse electrolytes. And people are like, oh, no. And other people are commenting like, this shit's great. And the com- I mean, I love a good comment section. <sighs> when people comment are section. just like fucking delivering one after the next uh, and i'm just i'm kicking my feet and laughing so hard because people are so funny do you know what comment section had me fucked up yesterday was it the the man bodysuit <laughs> <laughs> no but we could just circle back to that <laughs> my favorite the, one right, the, okay <laughs> that was not it but the, so this guy was wearing a bodysuit and he's like putting shorts on he's like no you don't need to tuck anymore it's like bodysuits for men it's like a they said they invented it. body it's a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> and the comments were like Imagine you get in an accident and EMT cuts your shorts off. <laughs> My was like, oh, just pull it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine men at the year and all trying to snap their bodysuit back. I can imagine no greater ick. Do you know what it's like for me? It's like this thing can go up and higher trying to get your bodysuit on before a night out. And a man... <laughs> That wasn't the comment section, though. Can we talk about the eight-year-old that drove half an hour to Target? How? I need I to. Mean, I need to read you something. I mean, like, I was reading this last a night. A hero. A hero. A, he- a hero. But, but she how? only hit a mail post. Okay. So <laughs> you know what? Let me let me read a you this. A hero. Okay. 
So if you didn't hear, an eight-year-old girl stole her parents' SUV at seven in the morning, which I'm confused, or 9 a.m. The car she took, the irony, was a Nissan Rogue. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. She gone rogue in the rogue. This made me laugh so hard last night. Bedford, Ohio. An eight-year-old girl took an SUV from her Ohio home and drove miles to a store where she was later found unharmed, authorities said. The girl, whose name is not released, and the vehicle, a 2020 Nissan Rogue, were reported missing around 9 a.m. on Sunday. Family members had last seen the girl in a residence two hours earlier. As police launched an investigation, they learned a small child had been... Behind the wheel of a Nissan. Started driving because that was my first thought. I was like, did no one see? Imagine you're just sitting there in the morning and you look over and it's like a kid and they plow through. I mean, through. my like niece is like going to be seven. She she looks like a little tiny child. A little tiny child. Learned a small child had been spotted driving a vehicle on a nearby road, but the vehicle could not be located. The SUV eventually was found a short time later in the parking lot. <laughs> Target store alone in Bainbridge, which is nearly 13 miles from her home. Police soon found the child by herself in the store. She told officers she's <laughs> Wait, <what is> this? <laughs> she struck a mailbox while driving, but nothing else. Authorities did not say when she had decided to travel to the store or provide further details on her trip. The young girl is too <laughs> the girl is too young to be criminally charged. Police said it wasn't clear Monday if any charges would be filed. Okay, I have a little more insight on this, so what I is was she, reading a lot. Yeah, what is she? What she bought she? the first thing she did. She went to the Starbucks and the Target and got a Frappuccino. <gasps> she she spent four hundred dollars at the Target. Four hundred dollars. Okay, what? So wait. Here's the thing. We can. She all... was able. She went and she went shopping at Target. She went shopping. <laughs> no, <one> honestly, <laughs> an, okay. an icon. Are you are you kidding? Hero, icon, legend. So the take on someone. They said, should give her a medal. Fuck charges. Give her the key to the city. Give the key to the city and she'll probably drive it around. Here's the thing. Someone was like, okay, we can all have a laugh about this because no one was hurt besides a mailbox, which is a federal crime. Here's the thing. This girl, you're an eight-year-old. How did you even know to turn the car on? This is, is this how she was driving? Like, because she's so little. And then you go to Target. She, also, how did she park? I want, I'm dying to see a photo of the park job. Dude, she, she knew, knew. When I was eight, I used MapQuest to go to my store down the street today as a 34 year old woman. How the fuck did you know? She's like a Lewis and Clark of of children. She gets there, goes shopping, manages to get herself. And also, it's like, what is that? It's like this is like this plot of every 90s movie that's ever been made. Yeah. Like blank check. Like, what the fuck? Do you think the Target people were like? This is kind of weird, or they're like, we don't get paid enough to deal with whatever this yeah, is. So I'm just above gonna their pay grade for sure. Can you believe? I just like I'm picturing her going in, ordering her frappuccino, getting a cart, and then just taking her time. She was. She, what, where do you think she started? Here's normally she's sitting in the cart, so this is her with the cart, <laughs> like with her little hands up here. I mean, she's probably a little taller than that. Imagine you. Also, I feel so bad for these parents. So they did say. They reported her missing at nine. She was, I think she was missing. They realized at like seven or eight. So she had been, you wake up in the morning and your child is gone. I can think of (laughs) no greater fear that a parent has. Like that is, you would be losing your mind. And then you find out they're found at Target because you're getting calls, several calls of a child driving a a SUV around the city. I mean, you would think that maybe like, I mean, it's a very big city. I mean, it was 13 miles. That's far. But I mean, to me, that's like Santa Monica. So I like, I think they said it was a 30 minute drive. Here's the thing. When I got my license, I will never forget leaving the DMV. And my mom was like, "Okay, bye. See you at home. And I'm sitting in my car and I'm like, I'm I'm not responsible enough to be. I'm a baby. I'm like, what (laughs) am I doing? That girl whipped her hair in the morning. and was like, I don't want to ask mom. I'm afraid she's going to say no. Grabbed her keys, took matters in her own hands. Dude, she fucking did it. What's her name that was like, said the quote, I don't want young girls to be told they're bossy. I want them to be told they have leadership potential. That girl's going to be a Fortune 500 CEO. She probably, yeah, by she, the time she's 22. She took out a mailbox that was probably like uh, got in her way. I don't know. She's like around, she was taking a, a corner a little sh- like sharp. Do you think it was like Cher and Clueless where she's like, they oops. came out of nowhere. <laughs> Except, should I leave a note? 100%. But I mean, like she, she watches her mom or dad or whatever drive all day, every day. That's how you learn to drive by watching other people. People have like, you know, people have to learn how to do surgery by watching other people to do it. And we trust them. Listen, well, maybe we should get her in the OR because honestly, I would let her take my <laughs> appendix out at this point. Of, yeah, like it, it doesn't shock me. Did you just a, a sidebar? Did you see that there's I saw 
not on TikTok. Sorry, I'm sorry. But there was like some show. I don't know where it was on, but it they it basically like they do like social experiments between like young kids. Oh, the boys what, and the girls. The boys and the girls, and they put a group of boys in a house to like live for, I don't know, a few days or something. And just see what happens. And they went, it was fucking Lord of the Flies. They went crazy. They had gangs. They were like, they also like, were just sort of surviving off the snacks that were there. They did not bother cooking. They did not clean. I mean, it was like, shit was going crazy in the house. Then they put the girls in. The girls organized right away. They planned their meals. They like, you know, painted on the walls, but they painted like murals and flowers. And then when one of them would get sad, they'd cheer each other up and have like little like, uh, like, a pampering spa day they did talent shows they i mean they like organized they were like and then before they left they cleaned up and they're like they're like i'm pretty sure that if the boys had continued a few more days maybe some of them would have made it out but the girls were like handled their shit and these kids were young they were probably like i don't know eight to ten like they were young kids so like i fully think that this girl was capable of it because um even at that young age the frontal cortex is far more developed than the boys are. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if you think if they're really like left on their own and their own devices for like in terms of survival skills, they could totally do it. Yeah, I believe. I mean, she can and she did. So good for and also it would be different <laughs> if she had I just taken to, someone out. I want to know what was on, I, what was the haul, babe? What did she buy? Can she do Can she do? A, she should do a TikTok haul. Like, like we shouldn't be exposing children online, but that would be the one time where I'm just like, we just we need to see. She's like, this is what I got from my escapades when I stole a car and went to Target. Yeah, she, you know, she hit that that beauty aisle big time. She wanted, she wanted some drunk elephant. Yeah, gl- she's glow like, these drops. are my these are my glow drops. Speaking of Lord of the Flies, she got this brow pencil. <laughs> Does she even know how to? Use, is she on TikTok? We just I don't, don't know. know. Speaking of Lord of the Flies, can we please talk about Fire Festival too? Oh my no! Billy McFarland uploaded another video yesterday that was so. I mean, it's not shocking because he is a felon and a known grifter okay so if anyone does not remember apparently you were living under a rock <laughs> fire festival there are documentaries about this what happened yeah so this they're amazing. con man they're amazing if you didn't see it what he did he did i mean he's he's a he's good at what he does at like talking people into shit but he used social media he hired like bella hadid was in an ad for it they they used you know it looked like a beautiful island and he basically sold this experience of a music festival on a Pablo Escobar's island, which that's not a thing. That wasn't what that was. So these people spend exorbitant amounts of money to go to this island and nothing. They knew months in advance they did not have the infrastructure to handle this music festival, but he was just hoping it would work out for the best. They didn't even have like like performance or perform like uh, artists sign up. They didn't. They did not have a festival. Oh, well, we're going to get to how oh. history is repeating itself. Yeah. But so they get there. There's like these refugee. It's basically a refugee camp is set up with these weird little like FEMA tents, Lego, Lego FEMA tents. And people like speaking of Lord of the Flies, n- when they're like, don't panic, everyone panics and starts hauling ass and grabbing these shitty mattresses. And they're like styrofoam ham sandwich. And goes and like gets tense. And it's like the thing for Mean Girls when that guy calls from the mall and he's like, Mom, I'm scared. Like, okay, to be fair, I do feel bad for them. But collectively, at the time we were watching it, and again, no one died. So we had to have a giggle about all these very rich kids that went to this thing and got completely swindled. I knew someone who went and he, I mean, he had the experience that everyone had. They just got there and it was a nightmare. And then getting home was a nightmare. He's doing it again. Yeah. I mean, the people, Wait, he's gonna go again? Oh no, 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 no! Not my friend, but oh, Billy oh, McFarland Billy. has yeah, announced Fire Festival Two. Fire Festival Two. He's like, he's like, I've over outsold or oversold Fire Fire Two, but again, like, doesn't still doesn't have a location for it. Doesn't have like artists signed up for it. Like, so what are you doing? So my guy, he's it, that's obviously a lie, right? Well, yeah, so he's, clearly. So he's but like, again, why are you? But why are you getting on the internet and lying your face off? You served time for this. You went to jail. Prison. Prison. Sorry, prison. prison. You went to prison. Why the fuck would you go on the internet and lie and say that you're the best at this? You're not. Because he says... Delu- Categorically, you're actually not. He says, Delulu's the Salulu. Yeah, well... He... Okay, so he is claims to have over... Because you have to... I went on the website last night. I'm going to read you something very funny. You have to, you have to apply, right? You can't just buy tickets. So he claims to have 20,000 inquiries and increase in the island can only hold 3,000 people. So now he needs to buy 
Pablo Escobar's island, which we know isn't true. So he is now selling a service, his marketing service, which I cannot, I'm dying to know oh, what his grifting. consulting fees. He's selling his marketing skills because he needs to raise the funds to buy an island. He then came on. It's in this festival is allegedly taking place in April. It is September. He's now like, okay, we have too many people that want to go. So we're just moving on. Next is talent. No talent booked. Do you know these people, talent gets booked for big festivals like this a year in advance. Like that is a known thing if you're going to have any big names at least. So he is like, who do you guys want to see? I went on the website. What do you think the tickets cost? They probably start at $5,000. Okay. (laughs) So you're close. There are four packages that you can select from. The fire starter, (laughs) which should tell you everything you need to know, is $1,400. Pretty reasonable. Fire VIP. What does the fire starter include? You get to light yourself on fire and protest when you get there, I'm sure. (laughs) The second one is fire VIP for $5,000. The third one, fire artist pass, $25,000. Prometheus. What the fuck is Prometheus? It doesn't say what they include. Guess guess the price. I didn't click them. Wait, so artist is Mm $25,000. The Prometheus, $100,000. $1.1 million. (laughs) <laughs> Shut up. also 1.1 million dollars if you have 1.1 million dollars to spend on prometheus i mean it's giving the titan submersible like this what is that if you have for that a, money to spend i for hope a you get festival I, okay the, one, for a festival this 1. man 1 million what this dollars? man should do to redeem himself is throw a fucking free festival if people can get themselves there it's free that's what that's what you do to prove yourself to show that you know how to fucking throw a festival just prove it and make it free and make it the best thing ever. Or like, you know what? Five dollars at the door. First come, first serve. Like the fact you think people are going to give you even fourteen hundred dollars. OK, here's the thing. So I didn't, and this is I'm just comparing to Coachella, which is obviously a reputable fest. So you can buy if you if you have a connection, you can buy artist guest passes, which is what we got to do last year. You cannot buy artist passes you have to be on the artist team or their direct family yeah so the, this is a but prometheus is above artist i don't care if i got to kiss beyonce's left butt cheek the year she performed i'm not spending 1.1 1. 1 mil that's legitimately insane and i guess that's they're catering to you know billionaires i'm sure he's hoping this ends up being like burning man which historically is not going well so do people it, still go to burning man yeah, but this year they had all kinds of other problems, like big dust storms, so they couldn't get out. But wasn't last year like real was bad? The, was the was the flood? It was the Noah's Ark of it all, and yeah. people are having trouble getting out. I'm sure they still have dust in their ball sack. But <laughs> I'm like really wanting to see the Fire Festival two documentary. So please go. Can't wait to see what happens. This man is a weirdo. I, I mean, I I just can't imagine being that kind of delusional when he got out of prison. At the end of one of the documentaries, it showed footage of him coming up with a scheme and it had something to do with sports tickets of some kind. He never stops. He's never going to stop. But yeah, he's once a grifter, always a grifter. And um, if you are stupid enough to give this man money, um, I will gladly take your money and yeah. just just take it. Yeah. At least I'm not going to lie to you that I'm going to like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to take it and put it in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Just honesty between us. Yeah. Wow. This was so idiotic. This is so embarrassing. Like, I, I have so much secondhand embarrassment. His videos time. are just like, bleh, ew. <laughs> bleh, ew, he's exactly. just walking around New York, like next to the people that are doing the virtual reality, like anime characters, you know, and they they like set up and do that. Like that is what he's doing. But honestly, I recommend going to his Instagram, watching it because it's it's something to be seen. But he has a nice photo with Trump on there. A couple of felons and one photo. We just love to see it. Wow. Wait, speaking of clusterfucks, did you see the photo of this? Because the public hearings are starting for the Titan submersible. And some of it, it's, I would say it's shocking, but it's not because they, they knew there was a problem and it shouldn't have happened. It was completely avoidable. But the first photo of the submersible at the bottom of the ocean was showed in this public hearing. It's like, so w- when they showed, and who knows who was actually doing this, but renderings of the implosion it basically all turned to dust in like less than a second. But half of the submersible was there. So obviously my morbid curiosities and like 
obsession with weird things and, <laughs> I, and I just need to know what happened. I God, I hope those people died instantly before they even knew uh, it hit them. Yeah. But it made me deeply uncomfortable that half of it was still intact. Me no yeah, like, I, don't, I don't like that. Either. Me no likey. No, they no, no, and no. like they were in you know, having I, I mind you, I you'll have to go because it's it's public. It's a public hearing. So you can go fact check me or go look at this information. But they had had something happen with the hull in a like a month before that it was deeply compromised and they all they all knew that it was like something about part of it being glued on and yeah it's glued on <laughs> they had they this had is three, like, a, like a science like a sixth grade science project they had three things they had elmer's glue <laughs> they had a xbox remote and a wish pipe cleaner a wish and a prayer <laughs> yes <laughs> I don't know. I'm on a, It's obviously tragic. Yeah, those photos are haunting. So if anyone has more info on that, feel free to to write in because I need to know everything that happened. I'll probably watch the whole hearing. <laughs> every and time have trouble sleeping at night. Yeah, every time something shakes, I'm holding on. I was playing tennis yesterday with a couple of real competitors last night, but they were like moving so fast on the court. And it, anytime there was a shake, I would I was like this. Oh, this is there's trees and giant light posts around me. This would be I'm in a little fishbowl of disaster if if the if the earthquake happened right then i would certainly yeah, die i am um, i went down a rabbit i doom scrolled for a little too long yesterday and then was in a real funky mood well let's ruin everyone's day what did you find out just some more upsetting information because I, I mean you sent that thing about the prophet thing which is like i don't know he's, he's giving he's giving like uh, energy i don't know okay so last time we had touched on the prophet but i have more info about it so it was this man from atlanta had a dream came here he was running all over la people were saying he, so i thought he was someone he's like who, standing outside of the la tarp is going evacuate california he so he, i thought it was someone who lived here but he came left his wife and kids to come here the only I, I don't obviously stuff like that happens all the time the only thing that gives me pause is he just left he said i came here i tried to warn you guys goodbye i don't think he was planning on staying well, I don't know, man. That's what usually happens when people come to visit. They leave. <laughs> well, y- yes, I understand that concept. But when you come here because you're warning people of the apocalypse and you're like, hey, I have to get out. It's coming. I don't love it. Well, they've been saying that for a really long time. Well, and also, but his so mes- let's fucking go. His, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not- no his messaging. It's not realistic. People I have le- like people have you can't. It's not just you can't just like uproot yourself, your family. So I have accepted my fate. I don't really care. I'm just going to live my life. But I will say Every time there's even a twinge of a shake right now, I immediately am like, this is well, it. So, uh, however, I do think Brittany should leave. She should get out of where she's at. Brittany who? Your sister. Because what I found out yesterday. What? Is this a Seattle thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Obviously, I know my sister. But I just more than the San Andreas fault, whatever the fault is, we're like Seattle, Portland, up to the, that shit's going to get fucked. Well, here's the problem. Up. If I was going to leave LA, it would be go to <laughs> No, 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 no. Seattle with my sister or my best friend, which she lives in Portland. So no, 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 no. They should, okay. they should, they should. Okay. Cause like, I, cause I go, okay. kept going, I'm like, okay, when the big one comes, like, where are the areas? It talks all about those areas. And then it's like, oh, and then it's going to like come down through like a lot of like California and like a lot of the major cities that are surrounding the, the fall line. And I was like, okay, but like, why Los Angeles? Mostly, I think because of the tall buildings might not have the structural to like hold on to it. And also because of the dense population. Not necessarily because it's going to have the same destruction as maybe the folks over there <laughs> in terms of just like like power outages and like just, you know, I mean, inland like Palm Springs. Well, I mean, I would love her to move here. So maybe I should traumatize her with that because my sister is like me in the sense that she gets stuck on certain things and like climate change. She you like cannot talk about it in front of her because she's so wigged out about it. Maybe this will be her motivating. Wigged out about her. it's. It's real, babe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's real. No, that's no. She knows it's real. We all know it's real. So she's ter- she's terrified about it yeah. and has like an obsession. So why? Because it's. I mean, it is. It's. It's no, really but I mean, scary. Like, but I, and of course it is. But like, why does she not like want to talk about it? Or because it's fucks her up so bad. Because oh. she like it like keeps her up at night. Okay. Just I mean, I have her and I are two birds of the same feather. So well, yeah, no, I, trust me. I I I want to know because one of those things where it's like. But you don't want to look at your bank account because you're like, I don't want to look. But you're like, I got to look because I got to mm-hmm. like, no. So it's one of the things where it's like, I really should know what potentially like what the the likelihood of like what the outcome could be of these things. Just to be prepared. Like, 
you know, the, the potential of fires and like those types of things like are like real, you know, things that could be uh, uh, a reality for many people. It was just scary. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I just overexposed myself to it when I should. It, it, for me right now, I'm trying to stay more present because it, it is really. Scary, yeah, no, I, I, I'm just like, just there's not, like, like, guess what? There's we're there's literally nothing you can do. You can't predict it. So if it happens, I'm just going to duck, cover and hold like they say to do. Bend over and kiss your butt. Goodbye. Yep. <laughs> well, the Anyways. last time Seattle had a huge earthquake and you'd have to look it up, but it it was I think it was an eight something or seven. It was it was really bad. I was 11. I distinctly remember it. I was at the dentist. And so I didn't even get to do the drill, not drill in my mouth, but like where you everyone got under their desks and we had trained for it. Like we had earthquake drills all the time. But because we had those drills at school, I was at the little kids table like doing something and my sister was back. And so instinctively, I got under the kids table and I got under the kids chair and my ass got stuck. My sister, my mom ran back and grabbed my sister. She had the little <laughs> bib on still <laughs> and came out to grab me. And she, I remember she pulls my arm up and the chair is on my body. <laughs> Couldn't fit. So she like ripped it off and we went outside and I remember it looked like the cement, like it was like an ocean. Waving. Like, yeah, it was like a wave. It was really scary. I hear she was like able to run like that because a lot of things that they said for an earthquake that is like, above like if it's like a seven right like you a lot of they have people like they have this whole vision of like you're like running to get away like you will not be able to walk or run like it's going to be shaking like really hard and a lot of the, a lot of injuries they see are broken legs because of people trying to evacuate or escape while it's shaking and i'm like they're like that's why really you should just duck cover and hold yeah i mean I, we didn't go we just went right outside the office but i hope if the big one comes that I'm in bed because I do a good job of just laying there. Do you know where I'd like to be? On an airplane. Mm. Mm. Smart. Smart, 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 smart. Well, I'm just, but I'm saying if we have to be in LA, I do a really good job of just st when the ha one happened, like the big one that happened like two weeks ago, just I lay there, like, texted you, went to, back like, to bed. Get my cupboards to like stay close. So all my like plates don't go flying out or something like that. I don't know. Like, well, the plates are going to be the least of your problems if it is the big one, I would say. You never know. I don't listen. We, it's not guaranteed that like, Everywhere's going to get that, you know, mm. I was looking at a map and it kind of goes like down and into like Culver City and then to Santa Monica and then up around like there's this like little tiny pocket. Are we? And I'm pocket? like, that kind of looks exactly where I live. That's not quite as red as the rest of the area. So while it will still be there, it doesn't look like it's listen, it's probably going to be shit everywhere. But like I'm just I'm trying to find like little tiny potential silver linings that like don't that, that allow me to sleep at night. Anyway, yeah, we can we can lighten the mood. Um, well, I want to talk about the serial killer in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> who, who that? Who that? So obviously, alleged serial killer. We don't know for sure, but a bunch of people have gone missing here on Reddit. Oh, Brooklyn Mirage. Okay, worrying article about Brooklyn Mirage. Is there a serial killer stalking the Brooklyn Mirage, or maybe this EDM club is just too big and messy? So it is. It's like, look, it's people go there to do a bunch of drugs and have a bunch of fun. And there are people, there's like a body of water nearby. So it kind of reminds me of what's happening in Austin too, but they're trying to differentiate between is someone, is there foul play or not? So obviously let's hope there isn't in general, it's not great that people are dying, but the body of water is far enough away to me that I cannot imagine people are walking out of there. I know they're fucked up, but just like that, if it was one person, I would say, yeah, possibly. But if it's, so many people i think it's like four people at this point is there any like sort of connection in like terms of like are they like all the same age or female or male like because or is it just doesn't matter because i mean i mean it, let's see again this is all alleged but this is what reddit is saying i'm a little nervous for sure but honestly i've been nervous every time i went before all the serial killer stuff it always just felt like once you exit the venue you're in a place you're not supposed to be and there's no safe way to navigate it However, one thing I've noticed is that since it's such a huge venue, even if you're alone, you'll find groups of five to 10 people pretty easily to follow out in all directions. So I guess we're talking about New York. So we ha so maybe people are walking home, but I don't know. It's just a little law. We don't know for sure. I would say in general, it's good if you're in a bad area because it's it seems a little desolate. It's good to try and, you know, try and stay in groups as much as you can and, you know, just be vigilant of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Damn. Now we can lighten it up. Okay, well, <laughs> with what? <laughs> you know, one of the most draining parts of adulting is planning meals. After just a long day of like being an adult, mm -hmm. you know, 
feeding myself <laughs> and figuring out what to cook can feel like such a mental workout. It's the last thing I want to do. You have to check out what's in the fridge, make a grocery list, and then actually cook after all that. Ooh. I don't think so. Ooh. The mental load is is so real. You carry it well, but the load gets heavy after a while. That's where Cook Unity steps in. It's restaurant quality food from award winning chefs delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly into the fridge at the end of a long day. And it's all at a fraction of the time and cost I used to spend. I've been loving Cook Unity too. What was your order last week? Ooh, I had this amazing salmon dish from one of their James Beard award-winning chefs. Mm. And it was honestly so incredible. The flavors were fresh and vibrant. And I felt like I was at a fancy restaurant. But I was actually at home in my sweatpants. <laughs> Plus, it was ready in under five minutes. Cook Unity has such a great variety of meals. It's like being introduced to new food combinations every time I try something new. That's why I stopped going to fancy restaurants. They don't like sweatpants and I just couldn't do it anymore. No, they don't really embrace that. Look, I love how they highlight local chefs. It feels good knowing you're supporting the community and eating food that's actually crafted by top tier chefs. The ingredients are top notch too using organic and humanely raised meat whenever possible. And let's not forget about the convenience. No cleanup, no meal planning, and most importantly, no stress. I just heat it up and it's done. It's so much easier than other meal services I've tried. Cook Unity just blows them out of the water. Don't take it from us. You have to try this for yourself. Let Cook Unity take the load off your plate, literally. Head over to cookunity.com slash disrespectfully or enter code disrespectfully before checkout for 50% off your first week. That's cookunity.com slash disrespectfully or use code disrespectfully for 50% off. Okay, we need to talk about something because I am irate about this and I don't believe they're bullshit. If you don't know, there's a couple on TikTok that has made their platform about being a family. Um, they've already had some problematic stuff in the past. Their names are Matt and Abby. Matt and Abby. They went on a cruise and they she had posted on her Instagram live while on the cruise that they had baby monitors. They had been saying that they had been having challenges going to dinner with a two-year-old and a one-year-old. They'd set up the baby monitors. They're, they're two and a one-year-old. And they're in their staterooms. And then we're just FaceTiming the baby monitor so they could watch it. And she posted it to her Instagram story and then took it down several hours later and now have come out with this whole like explanation apology, which is just like, bleh. like it's it just is giving like she said, I realized I realized several hours later, like how it could be taken um, that way. It's like that way, like if you if you're posting it. Like you were at dinner watching your baby monitors. The first thing you say, like, by the way, they're not by themselves. Like my parents are there, but we just we also like to watch baby monitors when we're not there. So like just, you know, like there's somebody with them. You could have mentioned that in the story, but you didn't. So you were basically implying that like, well, this is the only way we can uh, have dinner is to like just wa watch baby monitors from like way, way over here. Look, it's very incriminating. So that yeah, that's what they're saying is that there was a bunch of family on the trip. There was someone with them at all times. But the thing is, if you said first, we have been having trouble going to dinner. So mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. And then you posted straight up. Here's the monitors. This is what we're doing. There's so many problems with this. Number one, you guys have a huge platform. How irresponsible to say or imply that your two year old and one year old are alone on a cruise ship with thousands of people. There was a little girl who was and I can't remember her name right now. I think it was in the last few years, who was kidnapped from a hotel because her parents did that. And that was a hotel and they were just down and she was killed. So beyond like foul play that could happen, a two-year-old could get it's uh, easily get out of a, maybe not the one-year-old, but a two-year-old could totally get out of one of those pack and plays. There's water right there if they got on the balcony, which is horrifying <sighs> to think yeah. about. They could get out in the halls. I just like, again, I don't have children, but even with my nieces, when I have them alone, I like check on them physically, even when I have a monitor, because I like I cannot imagine leaving in, unless you're like running out to grab the mail real quick or something. It is just there's such a recipe for them to get killed or hurt. And then also, if they did see something on the monitor, cruise ships are huge. You can't get there you fast get, enough. You can't get there fast enough. Like and, and people are saying about how when baby monitors freeze. I don't know. Mm. I just I do not believe that a family member was in the rooms because they had two separate rooms to because they were, you know, babies wake each other up. So that was their plan for the trip. And each parent was going to sleep in a room. But you would have said that. Why would you why would you show the baby monitors? And yeah, I don't know. I just don't believe it. And I think it's so irresponsible. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. And I think that they were trying to just like gloss over. And then also like they were like, thank you so much, everyone who like 
was concerned about that that really means a lot to us because you know we we take our parenting like real seriously so like really we want to thank you all for like being concerned it's like shut the fuck don't be thanking people they're calling you out yeah so you don't need to thank them like that's this isn't time to like be so like i don't know aware like that like it's just like you got caught you got fucking caught how about that so save this fucking apology explanation video for the fucking birds no one's buying it also yeah and also if you make your entire platform on being parents and you do something make a huge huge lapse in judgment it's saying it nicely i mean i would respect them more if they had just said like this was a huge error on our part going forward would never do anything like that again blah 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 but yeah, they're just trying to save face at this point. I don't buy it for a second. Yeah. So there was a penguin, obviously born in Australia, where everything scary lives. It's bigger than its parents. Hmm. It's a brand new fledgling or whatever they call him. I also need to see a photo of the egg because what kind of witchcraft happened that this this giant and it's brown because, you know, when they're babies, they just have really fluffy hair. It's taller than its parents and massive. Please, if, if just for shits and giggles, if you need a laugh, look up at the Melbourne something zoo it is the biggest penguin I have ever seen and it's like I just don't understand how it came out of an egg and how that giant egg can- came out of its mom I need more info well, on it but egg grows right does it grow no I didn't think it did I thought it comes out as is and that's the size of the know. egg but I don't know how it fit in there or if it just came out and had a bunch of milk the first day and just went whoop. yeah that thing's an absolute unit and you have to look at it <laughs> so I'm gonna look at it after that thing that penguin has biceps. OK, I don't understand what's going on, but it's and the fact that they named it Pesto is like the best. Why do you name it Pesto? It's so cute. That's cute. I like that. But that's funny. Anyway, let's get down to brass tacks of the whole thing. Who's in your basement? Oh, gosh. OK, my basement. I got a, I got a couple basements, okay. to be honest. Unlike like in my daddy list where I say like someone who's like really um, proactive and like making plans or anything like that. People that do bare minimum. Bare minimum, like basically like nothing, you know, they're like, they're, they're, you know, saying things, but they're not following it up with actions and words like that shit's like such basement behavior activity. It's just like, I'm, you know, no one's got time for that because let's face it, things aren't hard to do. Also, the way that you need to reprogram your brain if you're looking at the bare minimum and you're like, oh, thank God. And, And that's not me judging. I used to be that person. And now I look back and I'm like, the way I would just not tolerate that now. And I'm just. No, no, thank you. Absolutely not. But like, it's just get in the basement if you think that just doing barely enough is enough to like get by and pass off like for acceptable, but like anything is just, ugh, I'm over it. Um, okay. And then the other person in my basement is Charlie Kirk, who's, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, he's <sighs> a conservative political activist. He has some disgusting show. Um, but because I follow Jubilee on TikTok and they post all kinds of like really awesome videos. They've been posting a lot of his debates that he has with these like other really incredible activists and debaters who have like, they're just like really intelligent and smart and like have great points of view on things and everything like that. So um, he was doing, um, d- debating a bunch of them on abortion. And I mean, it, it was infuriating. And one girl just like, she could just tell like she'd been watching him go back and forth with so many people before that she was just so frustrated she ended it with like well i hope your daughter gets away from you and has a great life like she just is pissed and they were doing it musical chair style Mm -hmm. so like they would like he would say a topic and they would all because they all wanted to debate him so bad (laughs) yeah well what i hate about him besides everything his face is so punchable oh it just looks like he got weasel looks like some squeezed out of a tube (laughs) sorry I just fucking hate that man. Colgate. I hate him. So he does something that really frustrates me in general with people with problematic views like that is he does a word salad situation. So he was like, what does fetus mean in Latin? Whatever. It it just so. And then like every time they would try to make a point, people like that don't have strong arguments because they just try to like they're just trying to confuse you with all these things and make you second guess yourself. But they did a wonderful job of combating his bullshit. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, because they, the same people that they have debating, they have like do like a lot of like, um, what they call where they could go out in the street and they're talking to people. Man on the street. Like man on the street stuff. And they're just like, they're always like really just great like interviews with random people or things like that. And I just think they're just like really insightful. So like I have some of my faves. So I'm mostly really excited when one of them gets up there. 
who's the one that talks really fast? Parker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like, he's real. Like, I don't know how he gets that information out of his head so fast. Nor I. I <laughs> Anyways. Really fast. Who's in your basement? <sighs> okay. Let's see here. Basement's crowded today. I have six. <laughs> okay. So first of all, Elon Musk, frequent flyer. He needs to get a rewards point system going. His response to Taylor Swift saying that she's endorsing Kamala Harris. Here's my problem with it. He goes, fine, Taylor, I'll give you a child and guard your cats with my life. He thinks he's he's such a like you were a nerd that got your ass beat and you so desperately want to be the cool person now. That's funny. It just wasn't funny. It was like gross. She's also dating Travis Kelsey, who's hot, hot, hot and told re responded to him and was like, I can bend you like a pretzel. And I'm yeah, like, you oh, think she wants your fucking like seed soft body on her? <laughs> like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, you're, you nerd. Your zinc Go oxide away. loving body. Like, no, I just, <laughs> ew. Uh, <laughs> but, here, but here's the thing. He, okay, so when he acquired Twitter and destroyed it, he wa had someone take a video of him walking in with a sink and he posted the video and said, let that sink in. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm going to laugh like a human person oh now. My he's God. just, he just, it, what, besides it being really gross and cringe, it just wasn't funny. And he thought that it was. Too many people laugh at his bad jokes. They got to stop. Got to stop. I know gotta he's a billionaire stop. and you just, your people get weird around people with money, but my God, someone needs to tell him he is not funny. Anyone that predicates the lie that we are doing post birth abortions in this country, that is the second a baby is born, that's no longer an abortion, that is murder. Some ding dong DM Katie and was like, You need to get with it. There's, they're, they're yeah, to the, executing to the babies. The, they're making them comfortable though. The freaking dolt that, that did decide to DM me and say that they're disappointed in me. I don't really fucking care. Like, you're, you're disappointed that I don't agree with your weird, backward ass thoughts. And no, they're not keeping babies comfortable when they come out of the womb to kill them. Also, let that's me... the weirdest shit. You should get your fucking head checked. <laughs> also, you're weird. You're weird. If you you're believe fucking that, weird. you're weird. You're part of the weird group. Like, think about it. Just just like just just step out of your own sick little mind and like think about that. Those thoughts and how fucking weird that is. Anyways, continue. Well, healthcare providers, first of all, the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm in the states that there have now been regulations preventing abortions they, they are scared to do them at all so those providers who want to help these people and cannot won't do it because they're you think that they're then getting a baby and they're like someone go get the baby guillotine we got another baby here and now, you think the parents are just like mm, now it's time to mind. commit murder like what the fuck you are you thinking are weird that's not like not uh, the baby that's that's murder that's a leak like it's murder hello okay weird Moving on, people who are discouraging football players wearing guardian caps. So guardian caps are supposed to, they're, I think they're mandatory in practice. They don't look as cool, but they help prevent with concussions and prevent CTE. Specifically, there was a sportscaster, JJ Watts, who was like, yeah, I wouldn't wear one. But if that guy wants to, because this last game, the first regular season game, someone wore one. And then there's, I don't know his name, but I do know he's the quarterback for the Dolphins, got absolutely pummeled and he's had a bunch of concussions. And when he was tackled, he tried to get up and was, he convulsed. Like he, it, it was so sad to see and really scary. So who cares how it looks? Let's, it's a high contact sport. Let's encourage guardian caps. Uh, does he also not wear a seatbelt because that's for pussies? <laughs> see, truly. See, <laughs> Sorry, but CT, like, I, that's the dumbest shit ever. If it's going to, if it's going to protect your fucking skull, like you should. Yeah. Why not? Why? I was always wondering if like if they had something better than a helmet. CTE is ruining people's lives. It leads to and I'm not saying all the time, but players commit suicide. They end up being really violent against their families. Like it's weird. So, yeah, let's use that. Um, Kate, only two more. Dave Grohl. There goes my hero. I, I mean, it's I'm not surprised because yeah. he has a whole history of cheating and mm -hmm. the look a lot of rock stars do. But allegedly his the person he had the baby with is 20 he's 55 and they're not saying it's also like potentially like a friend of a daughter or something. like there's all this there's all kinds of lore coming out about it and it's just weird but it's also like too like why couldn't you just like you know have a, a baby out of the what you know with your mission the, the, the public statement of it all was weird so that's what i'm actually he's in the basement for specifically in his statement he was like i love my wife and children i'm gonna do everything i can to earn their trust back well what you could have done was not get another person pregnant 
men will do anything but cheat. I swear to God. I'm like, you could have just not had a baby. Like that was your, you just didn't have to have an affair. But obviously I feel for his wife and his children, but his wife, I mean, they've been married for 20 something years. She's had his three kids. Like, it's just so sad. It's a tale as old as time that women put in all the sweat equity in the home and then that is how they are treated. It is gross. Mm -hmm. Last one. There's a trend on TikTok right now, the casual trend. Have you uh, seen this? Elaborate. So Chapel Roan, it's they use her song. It's like knee deep in the passenger seat and you're eating me out. Is it casual now? They I think they skip the eating out part, but there it just goes to casual now. And it's the first frame says things we did when we date things that we did casual when we dated. And then the next one, it's like absolutely nothing. We got married after three days. He told me he loved me after 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) People are like thinking this trend is really cute. It's giving me the ick because here's the thing. It's I did see one that someone did it and it was like literally everything. Why are you all like hyping up this love bombing behavior and jumping into things really quickly? I think that has that worked out in the history of the world that people like gotten together really quickly? Absolutely. But I do think that's the exception. I don't think it's the rule. And so they're like, yeah, they're like sure. basically being like, oh, my God, this really unhealthy behavior. I loved it. And I'm like, you should go to therapy. Yeah. Oh, thank God I haven't seen this. I can, I don't know. I I my threshold for cringe is I'd pretty low like, right now. <laughs> I've been clicking uninterested on everyone because I'm like, please stop feeding me this. Uh, wait, there's a tr- there's a trend that I really really like. It's the one where it's like, uh, <laughs> the moms with like their little boys, they like send them off to school, and it's like a Trump sort of voiceover with their backpack on. Imagine he comes back with a something surgery. You send Jimmy to school, and just imagine this: you send Jimmy to school, he comes back. There's been a major surgery. A major surgery. And then like the little boy comes back through the door and he's dressed like a little girl. And they're like, I like that one. I think it's I like, funny. I like it too. Anyway. I like okay. you. I like you a lot. Okay. Well, I uh, think that's it. That's yeah. all for today. See you guys Friday. Yeah. Can love, love you. Bye. Can love you. Bye. You're going to see the power of women, like disrespectfully. 